Uh, my feeling has been, <clears throat> it's been developing over the years, but my feeling about uh, our ability to uh, get ourselves out of trouble and, and, and educate ourselves, I am totally convinced that um, if you are supposed to hear, if you are, you know, knock and it will be open, the scripture says, seek and you will find. Ask and you shall receive. And ask and you shall receive. So I am, it's my opinion, but I think that if you are supposed to awaken and to uh, enlighten yourself <clears throat> and to learn certain things that other people aren't, uh, it will be given to you. The spirit in the universe gives it to you. Uh, and I, the way I explain that is that if you are, say, a young man and you are drafted into the military, and so now you're in the military, and the first thing you do is you are put on a bus and you're taken to a military base. And when you get off the, the bus at the, at the base on the first official day in the military, uh, you tell the officer in charge, uh, I'm supposed, if I'm going to be in the military, I, 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 I'm supposed to go to Washington, D.C. and work with the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Well, they're going to take you out behind the barn and teach you a lesson. And, and, and when they're through with you, you're going to understand you don't tell power where you're going to go and what you're going to do. Power tells you. And so that's the way I have viewed spirituality in the universe and for mankind. Mankind does not decide what it's going to do. It's the spirit in the universe that calls you. You don't call it. So the idea being, and using Christian language, uh, you don't go to God. God comes to you. Meaning, you don't decide in your mind that you want to know this and you want to know that and you're going to learn about this or that. I believe it's just the opposite. The Spirit the is spirit calling you. The Spirit moves across the waters and the Spirit moves us. Yep, that's exactly what I'm saying. So I think if you're supposed to know something, you will. And you'll hear about it. If you're supposed to hear it, you will. And if somebody is listening to me, but they're not supposed to hear what I'm saying, they won't. They won't get it. They won't understand it. There's nothing to them. And, they, and they'll go on their way, never realizing uh, that, uh, that the Spirit didn't want you to hear it. So we're, that's why you didn't hear it. We're going, we're going but, to take... Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but, but if you are caught... Uh, as I have been, and, and many others, if you're caught all up in the idea, some sort of an idea that pops up into your life where you realize uh, the dark, sinister forces at work and the great spiritual truths in the universe that you've never known, known before, all of a sudden you are uh, spiritually active to wake up and find out what's going on so to speak, I think it's because you were called by the Spirit. It's not you decided to do that, but somebody wanted you to wake up. Somebody picked you out of a group to wake up. And mm -hmm. so, uh, and so, uh, you know. That's what's happened to me. I can tell you that. That's exactly what's happened to me. And I think, Ryan, you'd probably say the same thing, wouldn't you? I, w I would agree, yes. Well, you remember the story in the Bible, in the story of Jesus, uh, when Jesus said to his apostles, this is a metaphor, but, it's, but it makes the point, Jesus asked uh, the apostle Peter, he said, uh, people are saying different things about me. Some people say that I'm this, and some people say that I'm that. Uh, what do you say about me, Peter? What is your opinion of me? And Peter says, uh, I, I see that you are the master teacher, you are the Lord, etc., etc. But then Jesus answered him, Peter, saying, Flesh and blood has not given you this insight, but my Father in heaven has given you this insight. 
So the point I'm making is that if you begin to really see something for the first time, it's not because you're so brilliant and so bright. It's because someone is giving it to you. It's as if there's a higher power in the universe, a higher intelligence, and it sees you. And it equates uh, what you are doing with your intelligence and your sincerity. And if you really want to know, and you're really asking, then, uh, then somehow, some way, you will begin to wake up to the, the information you are looking for. And it is given to you. You'll and be led, so led I to believe things. The spirit uh, is calling you. You're not calling God. God's calling you. I've been led to things since day one in radio. I've always called it synchronicity, even before I knew anything about the way that people use that word and relate it directly to young. I've always yep. thought that things are just, they're presented. And I've never prepared a radio show in seven going on eight years <laughs> now. It just intuitively, yeah. it might happen the night before, it might happen a week before. It just comes. That's exactly what I'm saying. And with me, it was, um, I had always questioned things. And uh, I was led to David Icke. And David Icke, started my journey of just an incredible, it was like a track meet. All of this information just started coming at me from all different directions. Uh, just be meeting Ryan a couple of years ago, that had to be some In type some of synchronicity. In some very synchronistic way, that was so interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, you know, our path leads to getting the opportunity to talk with you, Jordan, so... It's pretty, uh, it's a pretty be- interesting, it's a beautiful and I, I think thing you're onto you... something there because I've had that same feeling where information is brought to me in timely fashion for whatever reason. That's right, and you... a timely fashion. And little by little, you are guided. Uh, uh, you're guided to where you're supposed to go, wherever the great divine presence in the universe that men have called God. Whatever that is, whatever that divine intelligence in the universe is, uh, it picks you. There's a big difference between a disciple and an apostle. Uh, a disciple is one who studies the work of, of another person uh, and another person's discipline. And so uh, if, you pick a sub, if you pick someone that you like and someone who's caught your attention, and you really start studying what he's doing or what he's saying, then you are a disciple because you are disciplining your mind to follow his discipline. And so uh, you are then referred to as a disciple. But the word apostle means something different in the Greek language. It simply means one who is called out. You're an apostle if you are one who is called out. The idea being, for instance, if you were uh, standing on a field, a rapt attention in the military, and there's 200 of you standing in a rapt attention, and you're waiting for the, for the, the general to, to come, and, and the general drives up, five-star general pulls up in, in his uh, jeep and gets out, everyone's standing in attention. And he walks around and just uh, surveying and looking at everybody and surveying the situation. And then he points to you, points directly at you and says, you come here and go over there and sit and I will talk with you later. And then he points at you and says, come here. Now that, that act of the power that be picking you, uh, you are at that point, the Greek word is an apostle. So a so disciple compl- is compl- one who picks the teacher. An apostle is the one the teacher picks you. Jordan, we're going to and pause for just a moment. We have a call on the line, uh, 501 area code. Can you tell us your first name and where you're calling from? You're on with Jordan Maxwell. Hey, Ryan, it's Joe Roop. Hey there, from, Joe. Uh, Arkansas. Hey, uh, uh, Jordan and uh, Jack. And, uh, Mr. Maxwell, I, I highly respect your work. I know you're one of the people that um, was revealing this information way before it became uh, popular on the web, I guess you could say. Uh, while I was waiting on the phone, I think my question got answered. Um, but I, the intellectual part of learning all this is good and fun. 
but at, I think at some point when you start applying symbolism, meditation, prayer, ritual into your life, uh, there's a lot of scrutiny that comes back from the public when you talk about these things. They call you a black magician or a Luciferian or whatever. I've been called, <laughs> you name it, I've been called it. And yet uh, these things have empowered my life and uh, they've empowered my soul and my consciousness and my love. And I even spoke to Lon Milo Duquette and asked him the same question because I was insecure about it. And he asked me, would you trade the consciousness that you have now for the consciousness that you had then? And I said, well, well absolutely not. And yet uh, the world tends to make me feel like I'm an evil person because I'm, you know, I practice certain prayers, meditations and rituals, so to speak. I was just curious on what your opinion is uh, into the world of the occult or, or uh, let's just say practicing magicians. Are they evil in your eyes or is it pretty much the same thing you were saying before? Well, first of all, uh, I have to tell you that I have heard the same uh, you know, idea expressed virtually daily because I do radio shows almost every day and I have heard so many people over the years tell me the same thing, that uh, because I am involving myself in certain prayers and, and, and doing the kind of research and study I am doing, uh, that I'm losing my friends, my, my family's broken up, or my, my, my wife left me, or, or my friends, and I've been fired from my job, and whatever. Uh, I've heard this over and over and over again. So, uh, but the very basis for the story in the Bible about Jesus, the New Testament story, is basically a metaphor, uh, and it's called the greatest story ever told. Because the story that the New Testament is telling you is the greatest story ever told. And that is this that there's a war between light and darkness, between good and evil. And, and, and the scripture has Jesus saying, which is a metaphor, but there's a scripture that in the Bible where uh, Jesus said, um, they asked him, some of his followers asked Jesus, why do you talk to us in parables? Why do you use parables to teach us. Why don't you just come out and say what you have to say instead of uh, using mystical symbols and, and talking in strange mystical ways in parables. And he said, I speak in parables because there are people I don't want to get it. I, uh, there are so many people in this world, I don't want them to know the truth. I don't want them to see what I'm doing. I don't want them to know. I don't want them around me. And so I speak in parables so that uh, it's done in such a way that if the spirit of the Father, if God the Father, the spirit in the universe wants you to understand what I'm saying, you will get it. But if it doesn't want you to understand, you won't get it. And so I speak in parables so that I don't uh, tip you off to the real truth. I speak in parables so if you're supposed to learn and supposed to know, God would let you know. And if you're not supposed to know, you won't. Would you also and say so that it's because keep, it's a, these theme types of things are very powerful? Yes. Well, so just keep in mind that if you have been called, uh, uh, called out, so to speak, that means that you have not chose a teacher. The teacher has chose you, and therefore you have been called out. Well, that happens in life all the time. You know, you, there may be a lot of guys at work uh, like you, but if you get, you know, if you get picked to to go up into the company, well, they weren't picked. Why? Well, because the boss decided he wanted you. He didn't want them. He wants them where they are to stay where they are. And he sees something in you of real value, so he appoints you into a higher position. Well, that's the way the spirit works in the world we live in. If you're supposed to know something, the spirit will pick you. You, won't, you don't have to know about it and, and decide you want to know. 
you will know the Spirit will pick you and you will begin to open up your eyes to see things you never saw before. And the more you open your eyes, the more you will begin to see and it will totally change you. But you didn't change you. The Spirit changes you. So I'm saying, uh, and this is for everyone to keep in mind, when you have been picked to spiritually evolve to another world of knowledge, to a deeper and darker world of understanding and spiritual knowledge, the people around you are not going to be very happy with you. I mean, that's what it says in the Bible. It says if, if you have been picked, the people that you used to run with are not going to like you. They're not going to associate with you. you your wife is not going to understand you. Your kids are not going to uh, uh, understand what you're talking about. And now you're going to wake up to what it's like to be spiritually awake and alive in a world that is totally dark and has no knowledge of anything spiritual at all, and therefore they think you are the fool. Well, here's another example. If you are a normal, regular human being with an average intelligence, and you go on a vacation to a foreign city, and in that city there is a large uh, 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 mental health or an insane asylum for the mentally uh, handicapped and you go to that place just for a visit. As you're walking through this mental asylum, uh, all the people there know each other, and they're always arguing and yelling at each other, and, and there's all kinds of discord going on, but everybody who's arguing with each other, they all remember and know each other. And so they're all happy with the situation, arguing and yelling at each other, but they all know each other, and it's okay. But you don't fit in the picture at all. Nobody there likes you. Nobody there wants to talk to you because you don't fit anywhere. Nobody's ever seen you. They don't know who you are, and they don't like you, and that's it. So don't talk to them. They don't want to hear you. Well, that's the same thing that you are experiencing today. Once you start to wake up and the Spirit is calling you to wake up and become a different spirit, a different person, and beginning to learn things you never knew before, everybody else in this insane asylum that we live in is not going to like you. You don't look like us. You don't even talk like us. You don't think like us. So therefore, we don't like you. We don't want you around. So don't be surprised if, uh, as Jesus said, what they have done to me, they will do to you. If they had listened to me, they would listen to you. But they didn't listen. And so and you know, so that's Jordan, all, all I can say is that's what's it, happening with you. In your scenario about the general selecting one of the soldiers or the boss selecting one of the workers to be promoted, that would make sense too because the others may have a sense of jealousy. And that's exactly right. right. After, right after my so-called awakening back in 2009, I did. I had a thought come to me when I was meditating, and it kind of ties in with everything you just talked about. The thought that came to me was this. Everything I had ever learned would now have meaning. Yeah, oh, of course, because, because why? Because you more, now have a all, deeper came, understanding. Yeah, it all came together. I started understanding things on a different level, and my whole perspective on life changed. Now, my point being, was that you because you were so brilliant that you come up with that? Or did you get that through a spiritual meditation where the thought came to you? Yes, the thought came to me. Yeah, so it didn't, you, you didn't develop it. It came to you. Correct. Yeah, well, that's what I'm talking about. It, it, somebody up higher, we call it God, or the divine, or whatever you want to call that great spirit in the universe that we know is there, it picked you. Why? Because it knew you. It can see your heart. It can see your mind. It can see your DNA. It can see you for who you really are, not who you think you are, and not who everybody else around you thinks you are, but the divine one, in, uh, which we call God, it knows you 
period from the before you were born it knows your dna it knows what what you are you know, what your proclivities are it knows what your your feelings and thinking is and so if it decides that it likes you so to speak it sees that you are worthy to uh, to be given more and to those who have more more will be given so if it decides that you are uh, eligible for a better life, then it will contact you. You don't contact it because you can't contact it. And that so thought did all of come sudden, to me because when you just phrased it that way, I rephrased it when I read it back or said it to you. But the actual thought that came to me was everything you have ever learned will now have meaning. It yes. wasn't everything I, I changed it when I said it the first time, everything I ever learned. No, 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 no. That's not the thought that came to me, which means to me that it came from an, another source. That's right. A higher self. If it, if, A if higher it source, emphasized exactly. you, <laughs> it exactly. wasn't you. So talking to don't be yourself. surprised if you start waking up, awakening to the spiritual uh, world around you that most people do not even know exists. And if you start waking up to your spiritual life and your spiritual needs and start uh, you know, thinking in terms of other world knowledge and wisdom, you're going to lose a lot of friends. You're going to lose a lot of people. But you will be in that special group who has been called to know these things. So I don't feel I've missed anything. All the friends that have dropped me and and left me because of my work. I don't care. I, well. I don't. I don't need them around me. I'm not about to lower my intellect and my uh, my spirituality so that I will have other people like me. I don't need them. I'm not interested in people liking me. I'm interested in truth. And so I know if you are interested in understanding the world you live in, then most people are in their beer drinking and their parties and television and partying. I don't care about losing friends. I want to know, and I don't, don't mind paying for it. So I, just keep in mind, if you want to know the truth, the truth will set you free. I sincerely and, uh, agree. That's all that I'm concerned about, truth. But, I mean, first, but first, it'll piss you off. But for, <laughs> and a <laughs> and lot of other second, people. you'll lose all your friends. Because they're pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> but ultimately, at the end of the day, you will be in that small handful of people like Nikola Tesla and Albert Einstein and, uh, and uh, uh, Royal Rife and all the other great minds that stood by themselves as guiding lights for the human race. Uh, thank God there are a handful of people who don't mind the ridicule and the and the persecution but stand on their own by themselves for what they see and what they know and now, so, when you when you say and when you say and we're just about out of time but when you say special i know that word for some people is going to trigger the ego and they think well huff, i want to be special so i'm going to do this it's just like the spirit guiding you moving on the water you, you can't do this thinking that it's going to elevate you and make you superior to somebody else i don't believe no no, that's not no, how it works. No. And, uh, like I said, the spirit picks you. You don't mm -hmm. pick it. Absolutely. It's like we live in a death culture. Things are perverted, the perversion of the secret teachings. We lack empowerment. We have any hero stripped away from us. We're pushed down. And the weight of the world, like the world on the back of Atlas, presses on us. And then there's yep. somebody pressing on the world, making it even more difficult to stand up. If we focus... That's exactly right. I think, Jordan, we focus on intuition, we focus on the heart, we allow experience to take us organically where we need to be and whom we need to be taken to. And we do our own research, we connect the dots between seemingly complex, unconnected people, places, and events, then the world that seems so complex will actually begin to make sense.